Hello, this is Mark LaRochelle from Productive Computing. Thanks for joining us on this video. We want to talk about the features of FileMaker Server 19.6. Let's dive in. So this particular video will focus on what you need to know for Claris FileMaker Server 19.6. We'll have a separate video for FileMaker Pro 19.6. And there happens to be a handy page here on the Claris website, which puts together a nice overview of the main features of 19.6 in general. These features include both the Pro and Server features. On the left side of the screen, I have a working copy of Claris FileMaker Server. It happens to be running on Linux, but it is running the 19.6.1.52 version. So we'll be able to use this as a reference on selected features when we need to look at them firsthand. Back to the page on the right, there happens to be a handy link where you can click and learn more about the new features in FileMaker 19.6. This brings us to the traditional software updates page on the Claris website, where we can see all the previous versions along with this latest version of server. Keep in mind that as things move along, these versions will continue to increase so let's look at the new features of FileMaker Server 19.6.1. I'll click on the View button here, and we are there. So FileMaker Server now supports Mac OS Ventura 13. That's the latest operating system on Macintosh. This means you can run FileMaker Server on a Macintosh. It is compatible with the M1 chip, the M2 chip, and the M3 chip, I'm sure, when that comes out. Now, speaking of Apple, we have the ability now to sign in with Apple known as an Apple ID, as an authentication source. Now you'll need a developer account with Apple in order to get started and configure this. And keep in mind that this particular authentication is not group-based like we have with Azure. So you'll be maintaining individuals tied to a privilege set versus a group tied to a privilege set. You'll find this new area under administration and then external authentication and the Apple information and configuration screen is here. Next, we have some important housekeeping items where we can see a short list of updated libraries. Generally, when software manufacturers update libraries, they're doing it for two reasons, compatibility and security enhancements. I don't know enough about these particular packages to speak intelligently about them, but it is nice to see that they're at least mentioned and that we are keeping up to date with these features. Next, we have some general features. We now have a clone only option when you perform your backups. Let's go take a quick look at that. So under the backup sections of the admin console of FileMaker Server, you can create a new backup schedule. When you create a backup schedule, you get this new option here, which is clone only. Now we've always had the ability to make clones as an additional routine to an existing backup. And the problem was you had to wait for the entire backup to complete before getting your clone. In this situation, you can make a dedicated backup to only produce clones of your files. Developers often like to have clones as a reference copy, a lightweight reference copy that doesn't include all the data. This allows the developer to look at and analyze the schema of the file without the gigs and gigs of data that sometimes accompany or embedded in these files to begin with. So this is a nice option. You can make a quick clone, grab the clone, and use it as a reference during your development. In addition, oftentimes developers will use clones during the recovery process where they'll import good data into a good clone as one of the recovery steps. This feature is also available through the command line, as well as the admin API. Another feature available is you can now enable or disable the FileMaker Data API plugins in the FileMaker Admin API. Now, for those of you who are wondering what the heck did I just say, the Admin API is a separate construct that allows developers to talk to FileMaker Server outside of this control panel. That means you can use a third-party application or a web page or some other mechanism to use that admin API to manipulate these settings or execute different things like making a backup or closing a file or opening a file or getting information about your system. This just says that we now have the ability to enable or disable data API specific plugins. We can also get the FileMaker data API install plugin configuration. Another small but important feature, if the database backup verification fails, the full path of the damaged file database is now output to the event.log file. We'll be talking about logs here in a minute, but there are logs for everything here in FileMaker Server, or just about everything. And now the event log file is under here. 
Next, when creating a certificate signing request and private key using Admin Console, you can now choose whether to replace an existing private key file. Let me show you that. Let's head over to Configuration, SSL Certificate, and create a CSR. I'll fill this out with a recent domain, as I was just making changes to one of our courses at Productive Computing University, where we talk about installing FileMaker Server on Linux. Incidentally, I'm entering the same exact information I did originally, but we have a new feature here. After I click Create, we now get an important warning. Do you want to replace the private key file? This action is not reversible. I now have the ability to cancel this. Next, to mitigate potential security issues, HTTP compression has been disabled for Nginx. We won't talk about that specifically, but it's good that we're paying attention to security as a priority. This next feature is more about adding to the admin API that we already mentioned. This particular feature allows you to retrieve whether the list of databases are filtered or not. The new behavior is that databases are automatically filtered, whereby you don't get to see a list of databases until you actually put in some credentials. This next option is a really important one. Prior to 19.6, you were able to use the admin API to acquire the build date and FileMaker version used, even though you didn't have credentials to that server. Although some might say this is fairly innocent information, it might be used as a way to gain more access about a FileMaker server system, and this is no longer available without being authenticated. So it's been removed from that endpoint, the data API product info endpoint. In the admin console, filtering databases is now on by default. By hiding your databases behind this filter, it's preventing third parties to know exactly what you are hosting. In this next part, we talk about enhancements to the data API as it relates to toggling settings for the filter and the deny guest and auto login flag. Ah yes, one of my personal favorites, the FileMaker data migration tool also known as FM Data Migration, is now installed with FileMaker Server in the installation folder under FileMaker Server Database in this location for Mac and Linux and this location for Windows. Prior to this, we had to direct people to the Claris website, and it wasn't always easy to find that particular link to the data migration tool. For those of you who are wondering what the data migration tool is and how it can benefit you in your development, please check out our free course for FM Data Migration Assistant found at ProductiveComputingUniversity.com. Next, we have parallel backup file groups are now remembered by FileMaker Server between restarts. These persistent file sets are used during backups started from the CLI, scheduled backups, and progressive backups. So it's beyond the scope of this video to talk about parallel backups, but the settings now persist across restarts. The log viewer now has access to the FAC.log file. Let's go over to the log viewer again and see that we now have the FAC.log. The FAC log will generate log information related to admin console activity and the FileMaker admin API. It'll also keep track of activities including starting and stopping the admin console and SMTP notification test errors. And they just make a quick note that this log is not available in Interactive View. The Interactive View is a neat option here in FileMaker Server where it combines multiple logs into a single listing that can be filtered and searched on. Now, this is a big one for those using WebDirect. We've got better CSS caching. It's been optimized now to allow Java Web Publishing to request CSS layout caches only as needed. And we have CSS layout caching performance improved for auto resizing layouts. Now, this next feature is something that used to be in the old product way before FileMaker 19, but they've brought it back, and I'm so glad they did because it's something we really need here at Productive Computing when it comes to hosting. It's this notion of administrator roles. And although it goes beyond the scope of this particular video to describe all that, we do describe that in our Mastering FileMaker Server course available at Productive Computing University. This course now includes lessons on how to install FileMaker Server and Claris Server on Linux. So the feature of administrator roles allows you to designate individual and specific folders where you can isolate databases in those folders. These folders can then be directly administered one by one individually as groups so that you could have, let's say, the design department responsible for their databases and the development department responsible for their databases, and you can assign administrators to each, allowing important critical functions like closing databases and acting on backups contained within a defined scope of that group. This is a huge issue, especially in advanced environments 
or for environments like us as a hosting company where we need to give individuals at a company different access to different folders based on their scope of privilege. This one will be beloved by international customers. We now have the ability to do optional date formats within the FileMaker Data API. Zero for US and one for file locale or two for the ISO 8601. If not specified, the default value is zero. Prior to this enhancement, all data API calls would return dates in US format. The FileMaker admin API can now be authenticated using public key infrastructure, the PKI. Goes beyond the scope of this video to explain all of that, but essentially it allows administrators to use the admin API to define different keys. These keys can then be used as a better way and a more refined way to limit or extend access of FileMaker server within the FileMaker admin API. It's just a more robust security model, providing more flexibility, and it's a more mature approach to the FileMaker Admin API. For those of you interested in learning about the Admin API, we have a free course called FM Server Manager, where we include a file that completely opens the Admin API and exposes it to you for learning purposes, or you can use it within your own organization to make external calls directly to your FileMaker server and do things well beyond what you can do here in the admin console that you see here on the left side of my screen. Next, we have an enhancement to the OAuth offering. This just makes the screens more user-friendly, whether OAuth is on or not. It makes the sign-in options visible or invisible and simplifies the login process for the user. Next, we have the admin console is now accessible even when the database server is down. Check out this feature. This is something we've never had before. I'm going to go to configuration and stop the database server. I'll give it a zero timeout and stop the database server. Now check this out. Take a look at the top of the screen. In red, it says the database server is not running. Yet I have access to many of the pieces, parts, and components of the admin console, even though the server isn't running. This has been fantastic. This allows us to make and tweak changes while the server is off prior to users being able to log in. And then when we're ready, we can start the database server back up again. This is just a more user-friendly and more appropriate way to handle administrating FileMaker server with this admin console. There's no reason to hide the entire console just because the database server is down. This is a welcome feature here for us at Productive Computing, especially for the hosting team. Okay, the admin console has expanded the feature regarding external folders. If I go here under configuration and locate the folders area, you can see now that we have additional database folder one and two available to us. This provides more flexibility in the way that we architect external database folders. Here again, this is a nice security feature where we can now filter and limit access to the admin console by way of an IP address. You'll find that under administration, in this new area called Restrict Access. It's a simple toggle. I toggle it on, then I click Change, and I put in the IPv4 address here in this box. I can use multiple IPv4 addresses by simply putting a comma between them. In my testing of this feature, however, it does not appear to support IP version 6 addresses, which is the new up-and-coming way that a lot of networks are already using as a standard. So if I were to have a wish list item, I'd say make this compatible with IPv6 as well as IPv4. Here's a pro tip. You may want to adjust these while you're on the server itself so that you don't accidentally lock yourself out of your own admin console when accessing it remotely. Okay, some other small items here. Added an error message to the backup schedules tab under backups and admin console when the consistency check fails on backups of one or more databases. A new filter database option has been added to assisted install to enable database file filtering upon installation. The default value is one enabled. This is just for the assisted install file. You use the assisted install file when you want to automate the installation of your FileMaker server. And then new on Linux, custom web publishing with XML is now available. So that concludes the main features. Down here we have addressed issues, also known as bug fixes for Windows, Mac, and Linux as well as all three. Quite a long list here, and I like how they're detailing all the bug fixes. They also list any known issues that still remain. If you are interested in looking at the bug fixes, feel free to just look at this document. You can find it on the Claris website. 
Thank you for joining us on this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about the new features and enhancements for the Claris FileMaker Server 19.6.1 release.